Hi, and welcome to the third of these, these series of videos on using Sonic Pi 3.2.1 on a Raspberry Pi running Buster. And uh, this third one uh, illustrates the use of MIDI on Sonic Pi. Um, and it really can blow your mind. Um, I'm going to start off with uh, having a external MIDI keyboard, which I plugged into uh, one of the USB inputs on the Pi 4, which I have here. If you use the uh, the ones in the middle um, nearest to the um, Ethernet port, they're actually faster than the the ones at the other end, and so you can actually get a better response. I've also got plugged into the other of those Ethernet ports um, an external um, audio interface. Uh, I normally use um, a USB um, dongle sort of interface. Uh, I got one off Amazon which only cost about six quid or so and that works very well for MIDI out and also for mono, uh, sorry, for, sorry, for audio out and also it's got a, a mono input uh, channel. I'm actually using a, um, a slightly uh, beefier interface today because um, it works better with the screen recorder. The audio input is slightly better and I'm using a, a rather ancient um, Eddie Roll UA25 interface and that's feeding in the microphone through which I'm speaking and also it's receiving the audio out um, which I'm listening to on my headphones and which is also being fed into the screen recorder. As you can see um, on the screen at the top right we're running Sonic Pi 3.2.1. This will be released um, on Friday, um, together with the release of 3.2.1 for the PC and for the Mac, I will be releasing uh, the deb file, which is described in the first the video of this series, which will let you install it on a Pi 4, Pi 3, or even a Pi 2, although I don't think that one or two of the programs I'm going to show today would be uh, uh, actually all that uh, usable on uh, a Pi 2 because it's got limited resources in terms of a, a, um, a much inferior processor and much less memory. So at any rate, let's start off with an example and I've got a um, two octave keyboard which is connected uh, as I say to the USB input and this is being picked up by Sonic Pi. Uh, it's actually a US, uh, an Oxygen 8 um, version 2 um, keyboard, a rather an ancient one made by um, M-Audio, uh, which I've had for many years, but it does the job. And this little program, which I've written, which is here, is going to um, receive the MIDI inputs which are coming in, and these are being composed of uh, note on and note off signals, and each one of them will have two parameters, the first one of which, like this note on, is going to be uh, uh, the MIDI no note number, that's note number 67, and the second one will be a number. In fact, um, this particular keyboard uses note on for switching notes on and off, uh, which uh, in fact many keyboards do. The way it knows the difference is that the second uh, number, which is um, called the velocity factor, is zero, and if you hit a note with zero pressure on a keyboard, then you won't hear it if you think of it on a piano. So that's the way that it works. And so what this program does is to wait for uh, a note signal coming on, whether it's on or off. It'll actually handle both types. And um, if it's a note on and its velocity is uh, volume or velocity is bigger than zero, then it's going to save it and it's going to start playing it. And it's going to use the try synth in, uh, built into Sonic Pi to do this. It saves that note. And later on, if it detects the same note pitch being turned off, it will stop that note from sounding. When I start the note, I start it with a whopping great length of about um, 50. Um, I can't remember. I think I've got the beats per minute at uh, 60. So this would be 50 seconds. Um, and the note would go on for that length of time if it didn't get an off signal, which it gets from this keyboard. So um, that enables me to re basically have a rather a nice little organ, which I can use for just practicing and playing. So let's start the program and have a listen to it. And you'll see the audio displayed on the scope top right on the screen over here. So let's uh, start that program playing. I'm going to put down the microphone and I'm going to start playing the keyboard. Slight, slight glitch there, but occasionally I get um, is that sometimes it doesn't really work 
on the first note, if I don't uh, leave it for a little while before I start playing. Let's try that again. That's better. Right, let's try again. Quite a nice uh, keyboard, which uh, you can practice your organ playing. Sorry, I, I didn't pick up the microphone then. And um, it works very nicely. One little thing which is quite nice with the new scope that we've got, if I go down a couple of octaves and play a very low note, like that one, look at the screen, and I'm going to go up an octave, play the note again, and again, and again. And do you notice how the peaks move further to the right? Because this... Um, scope is giving um, a distribution of the frequencies being picked up and you can see that as the fundamental note goes higher then they go further across the screen and you can see also the harmonics there there's the bass note and then there's a uh, slightly less signal an octave higher slightly less signal an octave higher than that and so on it's actually not a linear scale so they get slightly closer together as they get towards the right hand end so that's the first program, just simple MIDI uh, input signals. Um, and these are, I'm using, measuring both the note on and the note on with zero velocity to switch the note that I'm playing on and off again. Now, in fact, probably a more normal usage of this would be to use it with uh, an external synthesizer. And I've actually got two of them running here. The first one is the synth Q-Synth. Um, and if we bring that up here, there's the synthesizer uh, controls, and uh, this little pop-up window shows us the um, particular voice which is currently being played, which in channel one, which is the one we're going to use, is Honky Tonk at the moment. Now, if I was to switch over, we'll go back to that screen in a minute. If I was to switch over the program to uh, this one here, uh, all this one is going to do is to have a live loop down the bottom which is going to use the MIDI command to send a note chosen from the C2 minor pentatonic scale over four octaves. It's going to choose one of those notes. It's going to send it to the um, uh, send it out with uh, um, a duration of 0.1 of a second. So it'll send a MIDI note on with that figure that value, and then a MIDI note off and then it's going to wait 0.1 of a second and do the same thing again. So it's continuously sending MIDI signals out. There's also another live loop, and I'm going to use the MIDI PC, or Program Change command, and that is going to choose, um, it's going to go through uh, the first 118 uh, different voices in this, and it's going to choose one, and it's going to change them every 3.2 seconds. In other words, every 32 notes. And the audio, which is produced from the Q-Synth, is fed back in to Sonic Pi as what's called live audio. And it will be picked up, have some reverberation applied to it, and you'll actually hear it through from Sonic Pi. And it will therefore also drive the audio scope as the note comes in. Let's uh, start it playing, and I'll show you a bit about the connections shortly. So here we go. And you can hear the round of notes changing, and it's now changed to a different uh, synthesizer voice. If we bring up the uh, Q synth to the front, you can see it's got playing Legend EP2, now it's playing harpsichord, the clavinet, Celeste, Glockenspiel, Music Box, Vibraphone, and so on. We just stop that for a moment. And we switch up here to the connection. Uh, this will give you quite a shock uh, because there's a lot of things connected and up here. We've got the, um, first of all, you can see that the Q. Um, that the MIDI through port zero is connected to 
the fluid synth, which is part of uh, Q-Synth. That's what's actually making the sound. And the MIDI through port zero is where we're actually sending these MIDI notes. If you look through, uh, actually it's MIDI through port one, it should be there. Um, hang on. It's, I'm not quite, not quite sure how it's actually got there because it looks like it's uh, connected to the wrong uh, the wrong port. Let's just no, it's sorry. MIDI MIDI port one there is connected to the fluid synth, and you can see that I'm actually outputting through MIDI port one. So that's how the sound's getting through there. And if we come back here um, and look at the connections which are made, and we look at the audio connections, you can see that there's quite a rat's nest there. If we just go through it. First of all, we've got the Q synth here, and the output of that is going to the input to Super Collider. That's the two audio inputs to Sonic Pi, and that's how the sound gets back to Sonic Pi, and how we're eventually able to hear it. Uh, we've also got the uh, on here the uh, capture port um, one, uh, which has got my microphone connected to it there is actually connected to both the input ports of the screen recorder. That's how you're hearing my voice. And also, the Super Collider output um, is going both to the system output, so I can hear it in my headphones, but it is also going to the simple recorder input so that you can hear it on the video which is being recorded at the moment. Now we've got one other synth there which is going to take part in the final demonstration which I'm going to do and that is uh, a much more sophisticated uh, synthesizer. Uh, it's one which you can control things and tweak them uh, very nicely and it's called Helm and the output of Helm is connected directly to the input of Super Collider and hence into Sonic Pi and uh, it will then go be processed by Sonic Pi where it's actually got some reverb applied and from the output of that Super Collider, you'll hear it in the simple recorder. So let me just uh, get rid of that for the moment, and we'll get rid of the um, Q synth. And for the last of my demonstrations on this video, we're going to switch to uh, a program which I called Helm OSC Synth Selector. And that is because one very important of this part of this program, uh, you can you won't be able to see uh, visually, but I can show you a picture of it. Um, here, and that is, uh, that's a, a picture of the screen of my iPad, and on that iPad we've got a whole series of different uh, banks, ARP, bass, chip, um, harsh keys, and so on, and these are all different banks of uh, synthesizer in the Helm synthesizer, which I'll bring up now. You'll notice that we're connected to the keys bank, and we're connected to the um, SF Brass um, uh, synthesizer. And if we go to Helm and bring that to the front, you can see it's got Brass CC2 connected. If I was to, when I've started this, um, I'll change the, um, the synth a bit and you'll be able to see that changing. Now this is sitting there and waiting for something to go. It should hopefully be connected. Yes, it is um, connected, but you won't actually hear it because the sound is going to uh, Sonic Pi, and I've not actually got the program running yet, but you can see that there is some sound being generated by looking at the volume trace at the top of Helm as I press the keys on my keyboard. So that shows that it's uh, alive, and if we now come back to Sonic Pi and we start this program going, uh, you'll notice that it's using OSC connections to this address. That is the address of my iPad, which is on here. And we will be able to use that in a second um, when I start the program going. And further down the program, if I can find out whereabouts it is, we've got a, a live audio coming in somewhere. Um, here, no, yes, there we are. Live audio uh, read in from the helm going into input one in stereo, and that is going to feed it back into. Um, Sonic Pi so that we can both see it visually here and hear it. So let's start the program going and nothing happens till I start playing something. <laughs> that was played on the keyboard but I'm going to start a little riff playing on um, the uh, from the Touch OSC. Uh, it's going to start playing um, a little 
MIDI riff, which is worked out somewhere down the bottom here. Um, uh, da, da, da. Yes, this one here, which is going to send some MIDI notes out to the helm thing and start it playing. So let's turn one of those on. There it goes. You can see the note on, note off cues which are being sent out here. You can hear the sound coming back and see it on the visual display there. And if we bring helm to the front, you can actually see it working there. Now what's rather nice, if I start leave that running and I start playing at the same time. Especially if I get them at the same pitch. Let's leave that playing and uh, try one or two of the other uh, channels. If you look at the uh, helm thing where it says Brass CC2 at the top here, I'm going to change this by using inputs from Touch OSC. These send OSC messages to Sonic Pi, which then changes what we're listening to. So let's go to um, a lead synth here and put on something um, a bit um, horrendous. Let's put a bell on. Says uh, Electro Bell. Let's put on Oz Platinum. The Pizzicato one. And I can play along to that too. Hard Terror. And arpeggio this time. I can also control the volume of it uh, in Sonic Pi remotely from the um, OSC interface. I'll turn the volume up. Fade it right down. Fade it right down and stop it there, even though it's still playing. So we'll stop the program there playing in Sonic Pi and I hope this has whetted your appetite to the good things which are in store when in you uh, download and install Sonic Pi 3.2.1 and really the sky's the limit is what you can do with it. Thanks very much for watching and I'll just come across here and I will stop the video from running and record it.